Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chris and today I'm going to be teaching you guys how to use Lego Studio. So let's get started. Okay, so for this demonstration today, I'm going to be taking this custom building that I just created the other day. I'm going to put the video in the top right for you. If you haven't seen that yet, I highly recommend you check that out. But I'm going to take this and create it in the digital software here. So basically what you're looking at right now is the Lego Studio home screen. You can see your recent files up top here featured files and you can build official sets or there's staff picks and there's all different kinds of stuff but for the purposes of this video here we're going to click create new and it's going to give you this template here this 12 by 12 little square that you can zoom in and out with two fingers on your trackpad or uh, scrolling with your mouse and then you can right click and drag around like this to give yourself different viewpoints and so basically what we're going to start with here is the base plate we're going to start with the base plate and then we're going to put that in and we're going to build the sidewalk and we're going to build our way up so basically what you want to do is just type in base plate or if you know that you want a 16 by 32 base plate you can just type in 16 by 32 and it will give you a 16 by 32 base plate and so the default color is white, as you guys can see right here. It'll give you every piece that you're looking for in white. If you wanted to change the default color to, let's say, green or sand green, let's say, you can click sand green, and now it's going to show everything in sand green. Even if that piece doesn't exist in sand green, it will still show up in sand green anyways. And then if you, let's say, you wanted this, oh, let's go back. If let's say you wanted this brick right here with the print on it, you can bring that into the file and you'll see the exclamation point on the right. That means that this piece has not been made in this color. So you just have to keep that in mind when you are creating things. But now that I have this in, let me grab, you can scroll down on the left here. And so let me grab some tiles. And so you can see that they have it pre-sorted by bricks, round bricks, modified bricks, slopes, uh, curved slopes, and each of these, some of them can be uh, expanded upon like inverted slopes and wedges, and then the types of modified bricks. And you can click on these if you want to just jump to it. So let me turn this back to white. And so now I'm in the tile section, so I wanna just grab a bunch of two by two tiles in here. And you can also change the color on the right here in the color palette. And so let's say I want to make this tile dark bluish gray and I want to make this base plate green just so that this matches our in-person model here. So now I'm going to go ahead and add in all the two by two tiles that I ran out of in that video. And so we're going to start creating the building now. Okay, so now that the sidewalk is in, now it is time to start creating the building and before we get too far ahead of ourselves here, I want to just let you guys know that you can make individual steps. And this is really handy for creating instructions. I always forget to add steps in between all of these. And so usually my files end up being one giant step or two massive steps. Or step one is the entire first floor and step two is the entire second floor. So that's up to you guys. If you want to create instructions, that option is on the right here. But now it is time to start creating the rest of the building here and so if we look at the model in real life we can see that there's a two by two brick and a one by two brick and then the technic brick so we're going to go to two by two brick in this software here and we are going to start building this out and so this is pretty repetitive at this point so i'm not going to make you guys sit here and watch this so I'm going to build most of this first floor here, or at least like the base structure of it. And then I can show you guys different techniques and getting angles and stuff like that. But also in the real world here, I used a 1x6 and a 1x4 brick because I didn't have a 1x10 on hand. But in the software, you can pick a 1x10 and put that right here. And then you can put your Technic bricks in between each of these. And so... Now let me get ahead and work on this a little bit and I'll come back and I'll show you guys the next steps. 
All right, so now this is actually a pretty good time to show you guys on the back here of this building, there is some tiles on headlight bricks. And so in the software here, I have the headlight bricks. And so I'm gonna show you guys how to use these uh, rotating features. And so you can bring the tile in and you can move it around as you want, or you can click on it and you can use the arrow keys to rotate it and you can use the up keys to flip it around and so you can and then once it's vertical you can spin it using the left and right arrow keys and so now you can just click and drag it again and you can place it on your headlight brick and it actually stays which is pretty cool and then again you can change the color to whatever you want i choose it to be tan because that's what it is in real life and so then you can just copy and paste that and put it on the other one and there you go this is the base of the building here. So now let me add in the front door and the window, and then we can continue on. And so another thing, another tip that I wanna give you guys is that copy and paste is your friend. I do not wanna be st sitting here, clicking and dragging all of these pieces together. And so once you get kind of a system down, you can kind of just copy and paste the entire thing for me. In the real world, it is every two layers is this, every other layer is the same. So as you guys can see on the seams here between the bricks, the first layer has one by six bricks starting from the back and going the way up. And then there's a one by two brick in the front that's facing towards the rest of the building. And then the one by six bricks on the second level start at the front and then they go back. And then there's a one by two brick right here. And it just goes back and forth and back and forth. And so once you continue with that and you make all of your modifications to this then you can just click and duplicate and then go like that and that's pretty much it and then you just take this and you rotate it and then you put it where you want it to go and then back here is a one by four and so you just have to rotate it to make it fit and there you go then you can literally just click on if you're using a Mac, it is command click to select multiple items, or you can just click them in here if you can't physically see them. Um, I don't know the exact key on Windows, but I assume it's control. And then you can go ahead and click all of these pieces here and just hit control C, control V, and there you go. You now have two more layers to add to your building and you can press control V one more time. And there you go. Now this entire wall is done. And so now I'm going to do the same for the other side. And then we could talk about the window and the back door. And we can round out the rest of the first floor here. And so now that you have the walls done, it's so much easier to go back in and add details. So if you wanted to add a masonry brick here or maybe a masonry brick over here, you can easily do that. I know the number off the top of my head for the piece. So I can just come in here and grab this and then rotate it as needed to slide it right in. And then you can just copy and paste that over to here and you can leave it as sand green, but in the real model, I have it as light gray. So I can change those to light gray if I want, or if I say, you know what, I don't really like those, I can make it whatever color I want. And so once you get the base structure down, it's a lot easier to go back in and change little things instead of trying to do it as you go. That saves so much time and it helps you so much when you're trying to build bigger things like this. Because if you're doing small intricate stuff, it's um, a lot easier to just go one at a time. But if you're doing big structures like this that are repetitive, especially in the walls, then I highly recommend just going straight for it and copying and pasting everything. It'll save you so much time in the end. Okay, so now taking a quick look at the model in person, the only difference between this and the digital model is that the bricks here uh, in the front facade have some masonry bricks in it, whereas in the computer here, they do not. And so with that being said, this is pretty much done. And so this is basically how you use Lego Studio. It's pretty simple. Once again, one finger is to move the mouse, two fingers or a right click on your mouse is to rotate it. If you press the space bar and click, left click your mouse, you can move it like this to move it through the space on your screen. And that is pretty much it. The only other thing I would do 
to teach you guys anything really quick is to show you guys how to hinge and rotate stuff, which is pretty useful, I think, in some scenarios. It's not super useful in every occasion because the um, sometimes the building just doesn't or the build just doesn't need it. But in this case, it does for the sake of the tutorial here. So you can rotate this, you can add it to the brick here, and then you can click on this rotating piece and you click hinge in the top left. And so now it is off of select mode, which was the default. And then you can take this arrow and you can drag it and you can take it pretty much any which way you want, as long as it's a legal building technique. And then you can go ahead and let's say you want to put a round plate on it, you can do that, and it automatically sticks to it. And if you want to add this to that, you can do that as well. And if you want to rotate this, you can click hinge. And so now this can rotate as well. So that is just one quick way to show you guys how to do all this. Let me make all of these different colors for you so you can kind of get the idea a little bit better. But that is pretty much it. That is a pretty simple building guide on how to use Lego Studio. If you guys have any other questions for me on how to do a certain thing in Studio, make sure to drop a comment down below. I'd be more than happy to help you guys answer that. But on that note, that is going to wrap up today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to like the video and subscribe, as well as click the bell notification so you don't miss any future uploads. And if you guys want more tutorials like this, whether it's on Studio again or BrickLink or Bricks and Pieces or literally anything, drop a comment down below for me. I would be more than happy to make a video and help you guys out. If you guys have any feedback for me on Studio or on this building as a whole, actually, I had a lot of creators block in that initial video about creating it. So if you guys have any feedback for me, both on the digital model as well as the physical one, make sure to drop a comment down below for me. I'd be more than happy to hear what you guys have to say about it. And once again, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Bye for now.